it's a funny thing when you are living in a house that has shelves and has cupboards and they are all full of stuff that is desperately important and then you realize that you haven't looked in that cupboard since 1984 <laughs> which is amusing because you only moved into the house in mm -hmm. 2012 um i am struggling with a concept which is called minimalism and it is a concept that covers things yep. minds and lifestyle okay so let's cover the things all right right have you heard of minimalism do you uh, as a concept yeah but only from a kind of uh, ikea swedish house design kind of um yeah not much stuff around you okay i my wife um hates clutter right it's and and i get it and it genuinely makes her depressed it it, it, it makes her sad let's say not depressed um so when you have like the your living space and there's no room for you to breathe yeah and you know think because all of this clutter is everywhere right that is a massive distraction for yeah. most people i yeah. think um the reason that we all have this um need for our living and workspaces to be tidy is because you know um what is the thing tidy place tidy mind or something yeah tidy house tidy mind yeah. so Okay, first of all, I'm going to ask you, do you have any connection to that? Uh, can you deal with clutter? And Our house is full of clutter. Uh, our cupboards are rammed full of stuff to the point where all the stuff we use isn't in cupboards. Right. Uh, and it frustrates me all the time. What, can I, I, uh, why is that? Is it just because you moved, like, because obviously you and Nikki moved into this house? Uh, it, I think I've always been like that. My, my bedroom as a, as a teenager was you know, clothes piled up everywhere, I guess like lots of teenage mm. bedrooms are. And I have a very bad habit of, uh, when I go to bed at night, I take my clothes off, put them in a pile next to my bed, which grows over the course of a week. And then at the weekend, I kind of have to tidy up rather than actually putting my clothes in a wardrobe or right. a cupboard. Or so a clearing up after yourself is something that doesn't happen if you've had yeah. a long day and all that. And I think, and it's the same, my desk uh, in my little spare room office at home is the same there's just shit everywhere mm. and it when i when i do put the effort in to tidy up i do feel calmer and better and a sense of niceness about it but it's not important enough for me to keep tidy right so mm. nikki's mum said to me ages ago you just put stuff away as you use it and nikki is better at that than i am right but i just don't do that i leave stuff around i'm not very good at finishing anything especially Good. sentences um finishing <laughs> anything yeah so I, I do it does resonate very much with me yeah okay cool well that, i mean that's good so at least it's a subject that affects us all now recently um obviously a lot of things have changed in my life recently you know like uh, you know things you know yeah so um i've stopped drinking um simply because that was becoming a focus um you know, we're trying our best to change direction in life i.e I'm going to go and work for Drug Link um, as a recovery worker, which puts me in a place I want to be. And also we started the charity Coffee and Coping. So I think because I have all of the plates in the world spinning above me with the coffee and with the tattoo shop and with all of that, um, I think my outward, no, my area around me needs now to be tidy. I've noticed that instead of me saying to Sid, my wife, um, oh, look, don't worry about the clutter. It doesn't matter, does it? We're just blah, blah. And I used to genuinely think that. Now I'm like, I can't cope sitting here because I haven't got room to think. Yeah. And it's weird. It's, you know, it doesn't affect... I mean, what, what do you mean room to think? You know, that's another I need to... I, <laughs> when you're driving a car, you need to turn the radio down to see, so you can see, better. see what's coming. Yeah, and I put my glasses on so I can hear better. Yeah. That, I mean, what... But it's true. It's true. It, it I, happens. I do. Yeah, sorry, George. <laughs> yeah. The producer just went, what? <laughs> That's because he wears his glasses all the time, but you wear your glasses. I do, yeah, but sometimes I don't. I don't take my glasses off. Oh, okay. So in the morning, for example, right. I do find that I put my glasses on to so, hear better. Why is it that once everything is tidied up, everything is put away, everything is, you know, um, tidy and calm, why does that affect you mentally? Because I think whilst it isn't, I think 
part of my brain is going, I need to do that. That's another thing on my list of things to do is to tidy the kitchen or put those things away or clear that cupboard out so I can put the things away. And there, therefore, it's a, an ongoing to-do list. Mm. And if there's less in that to-do list, then your, yeah. I would suggest that your brain is therefore got less other shit to think about other than what's right in front of your face. So it's an all-encompassing distraction. is so. Uh, I would say so, yeah. yeah so it takes up because you've got different parts of your thinking brain right so your cognitive brain that's in the moment is the one that's you know taking in all your surroundings and if that's really noisy yeah right i clutter everywhere and you're thinking i've got to do this i've got to take the bin out got to strike the dog got to whatever the hell you know what yeah. i mean then if that's noisy there's no calm in your head yeah so i, I i'm very good or very bad depending on your viewpoint of writing lists because writing it down gets it out of my head doesn't mean i'm going to do it any quicker yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So I write to-do lists all the time because I think that in itself calms my mind a bit. So isn't that procrastination? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And then you've written it down like a contract. And I'm then a you very still good don't procrastinator, do yeah. I'm a professional procrastinator. I'm not, but, so, I'm not so good at that. But I think that that, that solves the first, uh, whatever that is in your head. That Hurdle. Thing. Yeah. Um, but I've heard through uh, various people, I've mentioned Simon Sinek before. He's like a online psychologist he kind of guy got a big online presence mm. and he says the concept of multitasking people that think they can multitask you never do everything as well as you could if you're doing those individual things so people that are looking at their phone whilst they're watching the telly mm. or whatever or looking at their phone whilst they're in a meeting mm. you then don't have enough focus on either of those two things so you don't do either of them as well as you should if you were not looking at your phone while you're watching the telly or mm. You know, it's like when you're talking, trying to talk to someone and they're looking at the phone. You're like, no, you need to be looking. At that phone. annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. Until yeah, no, the, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Until the, yeah. I mean, my wife and I do that to each other all the yeah, time. Yeah, we do too. Right? But what annoyed me the other day is I was in a meeting because my world has changed that much that I have to go into meetings now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the guy, the guy that was talking to me made a point of coming to me to talk to me and then was scrolling through his phone while he was explaining his concept. Right, and, and it was quite important conversation to build a bridge that could facilitate both of us. I can't give you any details. It's not hush, hush. Mm, it just hasn't happened yet. Um, but uh, the whole time I was thinking, well, you don't take this fucking seriously. Look me in the eye. Talk to me, you know, about this. And in the end, I said, which one is it, mate? And he went, what? I said, which one is it you want to talk to, the phone or me? Because I got angry. Yeah. And you can't do that in a professional world, but I did. So fuck it. Um, and he looked surprised and I said, you can only concentrate on one thing and it's either me or your phone. If it's your phone, crack on son. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're wasting my time. And I got, and I told him that and he looked surprised. Nobody had ever told this bloke anything about anything. Right. I'm old school. If I, if you're pissing me off, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> right. And why is that old school, by the way? Why is that uh, not acceptable don't anymore? Offend anybody, do it will fuck way. offense. I, no, I don't mean fuck offense. <laughs> Because um, that would be weird. Anyway, look, shush. Right. So when you're focused and you're crystal clear, right, you can usually expedite things easily because you have clarity of one directional thought. Yep. So singularity is important, but the world is not a singularity. So even if at work you have one project and you are going forward in one way, mm -hmm. but you have a family at home who need you to be present yeah then y you're stretched yep so if that family life is chaotic it will distract you from where you're going yep now where minimalism comes from from my understanding and please dig holes in me if i'm wrong is the fact that if you can strip down the things that you can control yeah like your environment you know you can set boundaries for your family so they know where they stand yep um Obviously, emergencies and things take priority. And, you know, if your kid needs you because they're upset or they're happy or, you know, that's different. But I, I like the correlation between tidy room, ability to do things. Yep. Now, minimalism is not about shedding belongings, right? That, and that's what a minimalist will tell you. It's not about that. But that's one of the first stages of it. And what I find really interesting and I can relate to completely, is when you look at a minimalistic lifestyle, right? Can you sit in a room on your own without any stimulus whatsoever? 
and converse with yourself. Because if your world is chaos yeah. and your world is spinning all the plates, talking to different people, running about, busying yourself, are you avoiding self? Yeah. Are you not comfortable to communicate with yourself? Because that's the only person you've got to talk to when you're on your own. Yeah. And I don't think life puts people in a position where they can do that without consciously doing it. Mm. And it but what worries me is I'm more and more realizing that I don't want to think inside my own head because that's where I get into trouble. I don't want to be in a position where I have to confront my demons for another want of a better word. Because I don't... But, oh, that's interesting. I haven't been through a therapy process, right, that everyone keeps talking to me about, right? And I was thinking about being a psychotherapist. Yeah. I have a show that even says so. Yeah. Um, but what I am becoming aware of is the more that I try and look internally, the harder it gets for me to do that because I realise I don't like what I see. Right. Oh, well, that's interesting because there is a school of thought that all mental trauma or well, mental disorders diagnoses conditions are based on your ex your life experience right what you've been through mm -hmm. there's a common thing that it's drug addiction all goes back to a point of trauma or some trauma mm -hmm. there is there's a, a book that i can show you one day i guess um load of research about how <clears throat> as we know uh antipsychotic drugs antidepressant drugs mm. they don't actually fix a problem because it's not a it's not a chemical problem it's just masking it yeah, yeah. so it, it, you saying that you can't you can't face that mm. has got me thinking well okay is that is that part of the problem is that why there is this massive increase in mental disorders yeah because people are so busy i'm just wondering whether it's it's because we're we're forced all the time aren't we to be more productive to do this to do this we're, we're actually life makes us have to try and multitask all the time yeah so does that push us further and further away from self and further and further away from actually looking at what the problems are because we're too busy trying to be successful and trying to earn more money and trying to mm. be the man and try and be strong for everybody and do all the things that society's pushing us to do i'm not saying it's intentional i'm just no. saying is that the outcome i think i think it is the outcome i think i think if you <laughs> If you are under pressure, uh, which everyone is, whether you're, you know, especially in, in our class, you know, um, structure, um, I feel the pressure every day to pay these bills that I know I haven't got the money to pay that's coming in. So I have to restructure everything. I have to move everything around. Um, I have staff who, who break hands and don't come in for six weeks. Um, that's not a criticism. That's just what happened. Um, and, you know, at home, I have a child who is sensitive, who needs handling. Well, you know, I have a relationship with my wife that sometimes can be difficult because we're human beings, right? It's the same as everybody else mm. is what I'm saying. I am the same as you guys. I can relate to you guys. I am not anything different. But the struggle is not collective. The struggle is singular. Yeah. But yet we have to live in a multiple world. And that singularity is not allowed to be accessed because it's distracted all the time. Yeah. I, I was thinking the other day, this all came from me listening to um, a new podcast, which is called Lights On, which is Carl Lentz oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and his wife. Um, and they told the truth about the whole Hillsong Church thing. And, and they had this guy on who is their friend who is a minimalist. And he keeps saying... <laughs> keep saying minimalism isn't about getting rid of stuff and clutter it's you know it's about you know the search for self and all that and it's like well yeah but you're the and then in the same breath he's saying you know strip down anything you don't need so do you think mentally it would help right to just i i after listening to that i went through all of my books right and anyone who knows me knows i love my books but there are a lot of books in my collection that are fluff crap that I will never look at again. But I was enamored by the fact that I have hundreds of books, right? My mother, yeah, her focus on life was reading. Yep. That's where I get that from. But now, more and more, because I'm tired, I don't read a book, I listen to it. Yeah. 
Um, because also I need to learn how to sleep, which I don't do very well. And if I listen to someone telling me a story, obviously there's some connection to childhood with that yeah, yeah. and it calms you down and you don't think about yourself. So the reason I don't sleep is because at night my brain is very noisy and you ruminate. There's that word again. Mm. You ruminate about things in the past, but a beyond rumination, you're thinking about all of the things you have to do and how you are. And there is no distraction at night. Yeah. Now you can't turn the telly on because you wake everyone up. You can't go down and play with a dog because again, you wake everyone up. You can't get out of bed because you wake your wife up, you know, all of this shit. So do you find that when, if you do try and read, your, your brain just wanders off onto all that stuff? So you can't concentrate on reading if I'm, as well? Well, normally I'm too tired. Like my eyes are physically too tired to read. So then I will, I'll drop the book on my face five times. Right, which if you're reading a hardback book, that can have serious <laughs> connotations. Um, but I don't really want to make this all about me, but apparently it is. Um, I think that my problems with addiction have come from my inability to look at my actual feelings on matters. So there's an avoidance yeah. distraction. Yeah. Sort of and also taking drugs is great because you don't think about anything apart from I'm the best in the world, I'm on a high, I'm this and that until the drugs become you trying to get high and then it becomes i'm trying just to survive mm. and i think i am learning more i mean i'm around people all the time that are in this world you know i'm recovering addicts everywhere um people who are involved in a charity phoenix charity a great charity that's just opened a charity shop yeah. you know in hartford in castle no in market street in hartford um all of these things are drawing me into a world that I have chosen to walk towards. This is not complaint. But if I am not able to help myself, then why am I deluded thinking that I can help other people? And Cause, is. Because it's easier to analyse other people, isn't it? You, you're detached from it, aren't you? Yeah, but that's... It's always do as I say, not as I do, isn't it? That's right. what, what a lot of people give advice will say, because they don't take their own advice. We're all awful at taking our own advice. Mm. It's like the old thing about, you know, a car mechanic always drives a shitter of a car because they don't want to work when they're at home. And builders... Builders. Of ...houses that are all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just wonder if minimalism might be the key. Strip down things. You can still do lots of things, but then... So there are five days in a week, right? Uh, and each day you're asleep for eight hours, if you're, you're lucky. lucky. <laughs> um, you're at work for eight hours, and then there's eight hours, eight, 16, 24, yeah. Very good. Oh, look, look, maths yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there are eight hours where, in theory, you have free time. time. to do stuff, yeah. But we never have time, do we? That's the thing. That's the thing. Oh, no, I know, there's I no never, time, there's no time. Do you know why there is no time? Because we do not organise our time. Yeah. I could rule the world if I would learn how to use a diary uh, and a clock yeah. instead of, right, I want to do this, right, I'm going to do that, blah, blah. When I am focused, yeah, and I'm not talking about ADHD or, or any, I'm, you know, when I'm focused, right, I am able to achieve so much in such a little time. Yeah. But more and more, uh, well, rarely am I in a position to have that clarity of focus and thought without other distractions. Yeah. Do you, how, do you, how do you think we as human beings can change and use minimalism to concentrate? And do you think, and this is the key question, do you think that inner, not peace, but inner understanding is important to achieving that? Wow. How about that for a question? Yeah, I think um, back on the time thing, we always say we can't find the time. You have to make the time, don't you? As you say, you just have to... But fundamentally, of... that's flawed because you cannot make time. Time is a you constant. Just, you... ah, listen to what you're saying. You can't yeah. make time. Time's already there. Okay. So you have to make space with that time. Yeah, okay. Well, you diarise that time or whatever. Yeah. So I don't... I don't I said to you many, many times, I don't play drums really anymore. Right. And I will always without thinking, say, oh, I'll just never find the time. Mm. I don't make the time, is yeah. my point. I don't, I don't make a point of going, right, I'm going to practice for 20 minutes every day when I finish work, for mm. example. There's a good way of getting out of work. Mm. Um, 
but to come back to your question, yeah, uh, I, I think if my house was tidier, my office was tidier, my brain was tidier, then there would be more chance to focus on the important things. It almost, mm. I, I keep thinking in the back of my head, and I've got to say it before I forget, mm. it partly comes back to this um, second stage of life stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. Chris Love. I think that's what I'm thinking. A while back. It's that not necessarily just getting rid of material things that you don't need. And I think there's a there's a there's there's still a um, a justification in wanting to keep your books. Mm. They're nice things to have around. Mm. Right? Just because you're not going to read them again, you know, a, a, a nice full bookshelf of stuff, of books, is, is good. But, yeah, I think without ending the podcast at this point, mm. <laughs> I think, yeah, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? You don't okay. have to go full on with it and be, you know, getting right. rid of everything apart from a table and a chair and become. Hmm. No, I mean, it do, that's not what it's about. No, right? which is what that guy but, apparently keeps saying. Yeah. yeah, but what it is about is you could only have the things that you actually need or use. Mm. Now, that can be aesthetics. Yeah. Well, I love that sign, right? 15 coping sign, because it's where we, you know, but I don't need it. Yeah. But then again, the podcast, it's good to have for that. It's an aesthetic, right? But I've got cupboards full of stuff that nobody's looked at in years. What, yeah. what am I doing? Why am I hoarding these things? Why do we keep things that we don't know? And also, it's not like memories you know it's not oh yeah i remember my great nan with her but no you don't because you know you don't remember so you've kept that thing too remember yeah i mean i'm a hoarder and i get that i guess from my dad mm. as, a, as in my head it's because i don't want to throw things away because it's wasteful to throw things away yeah no absolutely right so my dad used to have a uh, an old biscuit tin full of nuts and bolts and screws yeah and if he and i inherited it from him was walking along the road and saw a bolt or a nut on the floor, he'd pick it up and it'd go in the tin. Yeah. And one day, one in a thousand of those things would get used. Yeah. And you'd get a little buzz out of that going, here you go, that's good. No, do you know what? I've got a, I've got a whole toolbox yeah. full of shit. Well, I've I mean, got, I've in fact, I've got one. two of my dad's toolboxes that are full of tools that since he's died, I've not even opened. Mm. Because one day, and it does happen occasionally, when I build something, I go, oh yeah, I need dad's, you know, I, I don't do a lot of woodwork, but I might need a plane, and I know he's got a plane in his toolbox. Mm. So I'll get one and use it. I, so, so yeah. So I think a lot of it is not wanting to be wasteful. And what mm. happens? Well, what happens if I throw that away? And then next week, I need a I need a, a, a washer that big that's got a tiny little hole in the middle of it. Mm. I've then got to go and buy one, and that's a waste. So there's going to look in the tin. Yeah, but, tin mentality is great because, but that's the what if. They're useful what ifs. Right. So I, I as, as a metal worker, know that one day I'm going to need a 3 universal bolt, blah, blah, which they don't sell, you know, and it's all that. And then, you know, then I've got one yeah. because in that tin of a million things, I've yeah. got one. Ian, the other guy who shares my workshop with his motorbikes, he has a massive light like, box full of that. Yeah. Rick yeah. has the same. We're all the same because we have the same mentality. Now, yeah. I've recently come out of my garage. This is a bit, you know, this is a bit boring. But so yesterday, um, they've, they've, the garage has gone from like 50 quid a month to 88 pounds a month and, uh, for nothing. And they're just damp shitholes. So I've come out of that. Now, obviously, I've got a big stock of little bits of metal yeah. and all that because I kept everything. Right. And in my workshop, as you know, everywhere there is stored metal. Now, that stuff's usable. The stuff that I threw away yesterday wasn't usable. But it was, I was bereft asking Curtis, who was a scrap metal dealer, to come to my thing, take all this away and clear it so I can give it back to the council. Yeah. But what I do know is that distraction of that garage was weighing on me because obviously money's a problem right now. So, you know, that £88 a month can then not be paid and actually go to pay something that needs paying. And is that more than just a financial positive benefit do you feel well now it's now it's done i'm i'm free of it yeah and i i, I that that fit makes me feel good yeah now i mean i know i know this is a really weird concept but you know oh you know what your garage is full so why does that affect your mental state well because i have to pay for it and money's tight so cause and effect right i'm worried about that and also because when something worries me i actively avoid doing it yeah so then now there's a money connotation with that. So instead of me paying 88 pounds, I had to pay double that. 
because I'd messed it up. Um, I hadn't taken it back. And also, I got annoyed with this woman from the council talking down to me like I was somebody that didn't matter. So that pissed me off. So I just went, oh, fuck you then. But in my own, that's my own detriment. Mm. Because obviously it cost me more money. What I should have done is just taken the keys back. But I had to clear the place. I had to do everything. But it's, it's a really strange thing, though. Take away things that you're worried about. Yeah, then your brain has got more room to think about things like self. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could, this could go down all sorts of routes. Toxic people, for example. Toxic people that are, drain, are a drain on your life. Mm. Just come off and then you haven't got well, to worry about I mean, uh, I say just come off. I know it's not that easy. but Well, I mean, it is, isn't it? I mean, uh, I'd say it's, it's simple, not easy. It's straightforward. Yeah, I mean, the process. Okay, yeah, no, that's a but good point. But the process is different. No, you see? It's, it's a good point. It's, it's simple. Oh, it's simple. Just tell them I'm done yeah. or don't tell them or anything tell them and ghost it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the older I get, the smaller my personal community is. Yeah, I think we're all like that. Yeah. And, and I think... I think a good thing. I, well, I think the reason for that is I don't want to listen to people's shit anymore. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm not interested. You know, I, if anyone's in trouble, anyone, I'll help them. That's why I started this, yeah. Coffee and Coping. Um, if you want to know about the charity, coffeeandcoping.org, go and join the newsletter. Um, it, lots of people have said, why, why have you started a charity? Like, that's an amazing thing. Like, I'm such a piece of crap that what the hell, you know, or what? And some blokes said, oh, what, starting that to, you know, justify or no, uh, redeem yourself because of your gangsterism and all that bollocks, you know, and really actively meant it. I mean, that, came, that almost came to blows as well because I lost my temper. And then I thought, Oh, fuck. I've just proved the point. <laughs> but, um, you know, the reason I've started a charity as well is because I felt the need to... I felt the need. Yeah. Right? Cognitive. It was... It was I felt the need to start doing some good. And, yeah, it might well be because I did so much bad. Yeah, but, uh, but it doesn't matter, does it? What One the reason is... Yeah. As we've said before, passing that smile on, you know. Just... The lady came yesterday. I was nice to her. She, yeah. she had someone to listen to. Mm. She may then go have a, just a slightly better day and might not shout at someone else or not feel that she's you know, under pressure to get angry with something else. And also she might not feel so alone. Yeah. She might come back next week and yeah. we'll have a chat that isn't quite so frantic. Or, I, think, or... I think when you are trying your hardest to become something better, you have to look at who you are. And I think anybody looking at who they are is a little bit frightening. It is, because we're not, we're not trained how to do that, are we? No. We're not but trained. I mean, I'm, again... It, uh, why do we... Yeah, but prescribe us... Why can't we look at ourselves without a textbook, without somebody who's qualified? That, this is starting to become ridiculous to me in my head. So, Laura, yeah. right, the psychotherapist, she's bloody great at getting inside my head. She will do um, one open question and I will fall down a rabbit hole and then I'll stop myself and go, fuck it, done it again. Right? So the need for those people is very real. Yeah. But if you take it away from the reality of that and ask the question, why do we need other people who are more in touch with process and mind and all of that just to get to ourselves? Yeah. Or is that just me? I mean... No, I think that's everybody. Because yeah, I'm, a, but- I'm a chameleon... So wherever I am and whoever I'm with, I can become what they need me to be. And yeah. that's a problem. Because over the years, you know, Jim Distortion, the fake rock star, junk buffoon, you know, the, the criminal, yeah, the, the teenage guy full of angst, the child, who the fuck am I? Because I have no clue. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, yeah. If you ask me what I am or who I am, I can't tell you because I don't know. I think that's the case with lots of people. Yeah. What are you? I'm a fireman. I'm a policeman. I'm defined I, by what I, I do, what not I do. who I am. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's the vast majority of people would say that. What are you? I'm a, I guess yeah, maybe fireman is a different thing because it does sort of take over your life. But yeah, I'm an, I, account, I'm an accountant. Well, no, that's what you do. You're, yeah, not, you're not an accountant. You're not an accountant. That's not what you are. That's what you do. But that's societal pressures doing that. Right, so you're defined by your job. But then... That's, that's how community works. So, you know, names come from what you did. Yeah. What you did. Um, your place in society was made by what you did, not who you are. Yeah. 
And I think I'm wondering where the point I'm getting to is we can't find self because self has been diluted to such a point by society that, that nobody's ever asking you to find yourself. No. So what, and, and so why don't we, why don't we teach in schools how people, how you deal with shit, how you deal with life? We don't, right? we teach people to pass exams so they can get more exams to get more exams to get more exams to get a better job because mm. that's going to be success. Surely it'd be better if we taught people how to communicate with each other. I think, I think, I think that's coming. I think in schools they are trying, but also the browbeating that we get from different communities to see their point of view is damaging. Um, as a human being, I like to think that I will take on, you know, and talk to somebody. I don't, right, I don't need to know somebody's sexuality to communicate with them because less and less are people now defined by their job right so much that they're defined by their sexuality or their core community group which is really weird because community is is a thing that is lost right yeah so they're using the word community for the people who are like yeah it's, it becomes tribal whereas community should be about embracing yeah. everybody in that community shouldn't it? so yeah exactly that so you are in a tribe which has a pecking order and a way of thinking if you want it's a cult everyone's in their different cults so um, I think it's very, very dangerous for people to identify only as, you know, their sexuality or their, I, you know, if they're trans or whatever. I don't have a problem with the whole trans thing. Why would I? It's nothing to do with me. But also, if you are a trans person who is struggling with who they are and what they are sexually and, and in different ways, then that's absolutely fine you go and we we talk to the right people we we make sure that you become comfortable but that's not all they are is it and that's no. what it's become that has become that's all yeah. they are right then no, it no longer matters what they do as a job whether they're an accountant or a fireman yeah so is this the way society's going you are you know it, we've come away from we obviously us as being older yeah we still relate to older values mm. like we're defined by what we do it's a bit difficult to define me simply because you know, I'm a tattoo shop owner and I have been most of my life. Um, you know, I'm an addict, mm. but, you know, I'm not using. But, you know, I'm a dad. Yep. I'm a husband. I mean, I'd love to be defined by being a dad. You know, that's an amazing thing. Yeah. But it's not all I am. So how do we get to the point now, past all this? You know, people are being counselled because they have the audacity to not understand the people's needs in the transgender community we also are ostracized by the catholic church if we're not catholic we are ostracized by the jewish faith if we're not jewish well, it, all, it all comes down to division doesn't it we seem to be finding more and more reasons to divide us not more and more reasons to come together which is what we in this day and age with all of this heightened thinking that people say they do actually what that does is gives you another reason to put yourself above somebody else. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is a thinker and they are intelligent and they can hold concepts, thoughts and end results in their mind all at once will then talk to people and they are either not understood or understood by the people on their same intellectual level. If you are not of that intellectual level, you are then discarded because you cannot understand what the concepts are. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you look at the likes of Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson, not that I'm putting them together, but, um, you know, Andrew Tate has realised that if you speak to the lower end minority male, uh, majority male, sorry, you know, the disillusioned male who doesn't know how to act now, there are plenty of them who are basically from an environment that says you're the man you're yeah. the provider why on earth do we have to listen to women well, what the, i mean what the fuck is that about mm. you listen to women because they're just as fucking clever as you are mate and usually they've got a better view than you have um you know but equality isn't possible because you've got people still saying you know, men are men, men are providers, we do this, we do that. We are. Yeah, that's our role, right? The women 
are the baby makers and the bread and all that, but there's so much more than that. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, we are equal, we are humans, and it comes down to, you know, equality of pay and all that. And, you know, women have come from behind to have to get their own vote, vote and fight for that. But at the end of the day, the people that are shouting for equality aren't shouting for equality. They're shouting for more equality than others. They're more equal than anybody else. Yeah. And I think until you can have a balanced society that even though there is separation through tribalism and communities, I don't want to use community and tribalism together, but you know what I mean. Why can't one community be good at one thing and feed another community mm. and in a cycle and therefore all the different communities are using the strengths of each other and there becomes a balance well that is the essence of community isn't it right if you live in a village and you've got a carpenter and you've got a bricklayer and you've got a plumber and you've got an electrician you can all between you build the house together can't you yeah and can yeah. i suggest to you that maybe we've we've been enamored by perceived intelligence that take away from core need well, that's profound. Well, you have people are enamoured with their ability to be cleverer than somebody else. People are enamoured if they know more than other people. And you can be humble and you can do that, right? Mm -hmm. But what's happening is we're losing core values that are necessary. So therefore, instead of community working together to go to a goal. We are getting, I've got to employ him and pay them and do this and do that. And that, that is a barrier. You know, these builders, they need to earn money. Mm. And, you know, a lot of them earn a lot of money. And, but that's not the problem. The problem is, is that people who can't afford it, there's no community to help them afford what they need. And it's help. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the point. It's right. Help, right. And what do I always say about communities? What do they do? They're going to help each other. And that is lost. If you're in a community of people, which is not exclusive it's inclusive mm. but community doesn't mean right i am a sportsman i am a car driver i am a motorcyclist a community is everyone around yeah who can move in a in a singular direction together or fractured movement everyone but they all know that they have got back up from their main core community mm. and i think as society is built on that by the carpenter, the blacksmith, the farmer, all together, sort in a community that was only corrupted by higher echelons, so sheriffs and and, king, and kings and and nobles, taking their part without providing anything. Mm. So therefore, immediately there's a tyrant, if you like, that controls what goes on. Yeah. If you look at the struggles that the government are having now. You know, they're all saying, well, because of the mess that the Tories made and all of this and that. What people need to understand about government is, is that they will deal with the knock-on effect of the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, so we are still dealing with Margaret Thatcher's issues, um, which is exacerbated by greed and uh, nepotism, um, people providing money for their mates, all of yeah. that. That's what yeah. politics has become. So the leaders have reverted. But I mean, what we're saying is we've reverted in one way. Yeah, I, you know, the tyrants, the top level people, you know, have then become self-serving to a point where they do not serve the country. Yep. And the people below have lost the community that they needed to function. Yeah, because we've all been put into division. Yeah. What's that got to do with minimalism? Well, if you lower, you know, if you lower your needs and you lower your expectations from what you want, yeah, then you reduce your circle. Of you re reduce your circle of people that you need to influence you and therefore you can concentrate on having people around you that you can help and support freely mm. without judgment. So you can see off the back of that why people go and live on a commune, can't you? Right? Because yeah. you haven't got the pressure of a job. No, you haven't I, got the pressure of paying a mortgage or whatever. You just all help each other. If so, I didn't, if I didn't hate, um, hate's a strong word, but I think it's valid. If I didn't hate the way communes work, i.e., there is a leader who's a smoke. You see, cults, right? <laughs> Look at what I just said about society. Cults are the, are the same. There's a tyrant, and there's people under the tyrant who serve that 
blindly. Yeah. yeah. Right? Now, obviously, not every community will turn into a cult. But the way humans work is if you're either a leader or you are somebody who looks for leadership. Yeah? N normally. Right? So, you know, I have no idea what I am, but I don't like to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to be told how to function. Even if I am doing it wrong, I will work that out eventually. But you go and live in a commune and everyone is equal. Again, just by human nature, someone will be more equal than others and yeah. will start issuing things. Right, we've got to sort this out. We're not making enough grass. We're not making enough blah, blah. We're not feeding the kids, yeah. right? So blah, blah. And someone will rise to the top. And you can guarantee that that one person will then see that power. And once they recognize it, then start, it's tainted. I'll start taking from it rather than... Yeah, but it, it, and I'm not talking about evil, you know. I'm not saying, you know, they suddenly start, you know, assimilating everyone's wives as their concubine. You know, I'm just saying that they will say, oh, I'll just have a little bit extra because of the work I've done. Yeah, because I deserve it. I yeah. deserve that, right? Well, no, you don't. Because one, you're talking, you're not doing. But without you doing that, maybe the community but you can But you can see how we've gone from groups of nomads that did mm -hmm. function okay to then settle... And then, you know, you then get your, as you say, you get your leader, you get that structure, which becomes society. Yeah. And then it becomes too big to manage as a small group, doesn't it? And that's, yeah. I guess, the fundamental problem with. And also, I mean, I think the, the concept of control um, is where you look to somebody else for your own protection and you look to somebody else for the way that you can earn money or, or you can help. Now, if you're looking to somebody else for protection, so the police force, um, there are not enough police to protect everyone. That's why people are murdered. That's why people are raped. That's why people are kidnapped. And that's why people are able to do what they do. But if there were too many policemen, it would be a police state and a dictatorship. Yep. And whoever the leader of the police was would have instigated a way to get control of the people. Private army type scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the police are there. Um, a lot of them are kids. A lot of them couldn't handle me on a bad day. And I've proved that twice, and I'm not proud of that. But, you know, if I decide to kick off, unless there's some six-foot-two Neanderthal in front of me, I'm going to get away, and I'm going to hurt somebody. Obviously not nowadays. You know, but that's what I'm saying, and that worries me for them. They've put on a little blue suit, been given a handbook, yeah, and are told to get out on the street. Great, so... People used to respect that little blue suit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And even me, in my, you know, you, you knew that the coppers were there to, you know, there, there was a problem. I spent a lot of time paying policemen to fuck off. You know, it's that simple. But what, I'm, what I want to end with, really, is what I'm saying is, if your life is fractured and you feel a bit desperate, just try, maybe go, if there's a room in your house that's been bugging you because it's dirty, just go and clean it. Yeah. Or if you've got a cupboard, right, that you haven't even looked in, just go and look in it, take everything out and then go, I don't need that. I don't need that. But I do want that. Right. Wanting to keep things is OK. But if you don't need it, get rid of it, because then the clutter that's on the top of that cabinet yep. can then go in the in cabinet, the cabinet. Yep. and then you will use it because they are things you use. And I think if that little step can go then maybe another little step is, bit by bit, have some alone time. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at the telly. Don't put your computer on. Yeah? Even if it's five minutes, look internally. Look at what you're saying to yourself. Because you will then see, you know, I, I mean, going to a funeral yesterday, um, Matthew was a father. Matthew was a lawyer. And he was the person who's known me in this world longest apart from my parents. His death, um, now, they're going to have to start looking at everything that Matt has and what he did and strip it down. But they're going to have to, is this a memory or am I holding on because this is one of his things? Mm. Yeah. And, you know, if you, that's the extreme end of life because every one of us dies and we'll leave some things behind. But if you're in a house that where you can sit down and go, I know where that is, and the, the, the top is clear, that can give you clarity. Yeah, yeah. 
And if you're able to look inside and not get frightened, get upset, and you can actually talk to yourself about you, you are going to be in such a strong position mentally. Yep. I mean, we don't talk to the camera much. Um, but what I want to say is that we are now finding our core audience of people. And 50 and Coping started out as me having a crisis about being 50. Now I'm over that. I'm 51 in a month. Um, what we're doing now is we are trying to understand and find ways to actually cope with what's going on. And I seem to be going through some, I don't know, midlife crisis about things, but also making valid changes. If you are worried about changes you are making or you are struggling with decisions that you need to make, okay, we can probably help you now, okay? If you needed just to reach out, yeah, an email, yeah, then 50 and coping at gmail.com. If you need signposting to actual mental health or anything, go to coffeeandcoping.org because there we have set up a charity that has a network of other charities and also the NHS and also some government legislation. So we can help you now. So this has gone from a little vanity project that my friends jumped on to something that actually is quite meaningful. So this show is dedicated to Matthew Hardiman and to him and his family. We'll take it from here, mate. Rest in peace. <laughs>